Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, the three extremely annoying Pokemon of Pokemon X and Y to catch. Well, not necessarily am I talking about Pokemon, but I'm talking about Legendaries, because there's much more annoying Pokemon, but when it comes to Legendaries, these three birds are the most annoying, and we probably clicked on this video because you want to know how to get them to stop running from you. So let's go ahead and catch Zapdos, Articuno, and Moltres. So before I begin, you probably only ran into one of them so far, and you will probably only run into one of them because the one you run into <laughs> actually depends on which starter you chose. So if you chose Chespin, you get Articuno. If you chose Fennekin, you get Zapdos. And if you chose the Almighty Froakie, then you get Moltres. Alright, enough of that. To catch one of these birds, you're gonna have to run into them. Just like any roaming legendary, their location changes each time you enter a new route or city or just a new place. And in previous games, you'd notice that each time you went to a different route, they would travel across the entire map. Well, unlike that, they actually go on a path, which is not really set, but they actually go on a path in this game. So as you just saw in this battle, I encountered Moltres and he didn't give me a second to even use a move or a Pokeball. If you go to the Pokedex and search for Moltres' location, then you can actually track it down, but it's not gonna just sit there, it's gonna run away again. The trick to catching him is you're just gonna have to keep chasing him down and after a while, he's gonna calm himself and go to a certain location and stay there. And at that point, if you were to go to that location, it's actually gonna come and attack you. So the most easy and efficient way of actually catching Moltres and finding him a dozen times is to go to Santaloon City and at the top left corner you can transition between Route 4 and Santaloon City changing your route twice. Bring a Pokemon between levels 30 and 70 just to be safe and place down a rappel and continuously walk in the grass and if you don't find him switch routes and come back and walk in the grass again. You'll be able to run into your legendary bird a bunch of times and each time he flees or each one or two times he flees it's a really good idea to check your Pokedex to see where he is. If his location is shown at the top left part of the map in the Sea Spirit's Den, then that means you have accomplished count encountering him 10 times, and it's now time to catch him. Prepare, he's not going to run away, but make sure you prepare the same way you did for Mewtwo or Zygarde or any other legendary, even Xerneas or Evil if you want to. Alright, so let's go ahead and fly into Kumarain City, and if you're on the coastal side then you're safe, but if you're on the cliff side then you're gonna have to take this train thing, I forget what it's called, it's called the monorail, you're gonna have to take this monorail and you're gonna have to go back to the coastal side, I kinda mix them up. The coastal side, as the name suggests, is the one close to the water body, so when you head east or actually west of this town, then you'll be able to go to Route 12 and surf upward. From Forage Road, it's a good idea to bring a bunch of repels, not too many, maybe two or three, because you're going to encounter a lot of Pokemon on the way. Once you get there, you're going to have to go a bit more up and you're going to enter the Azur Bay. The Azur Bay is right where the Sea Spirit's Den is located. When you get a bit further, your camera angle is going to change for, for just like a few seconds as you're moving. If you stay in that location, you can view the camera angle for much longer and you can sort of map it out. And the rocks make it look like... You can't get there because it's surrounded by rocks, but actually if you just go around the rocks, you can go to the Sea Spirit's Den. And I recommend you saving right outside the cave. So as you saw, he didn't really just sit there like an interactable Pokemon, he just randomly appears. Well, not randomly, but he'll sort of attack you, so it's kind of unexpected, which is why I want a lot of people to just save outside. So it's a really good idea for every legendary or every Pokemon you're catching to just throw a quick ball on the first turn. If it's not a legendary and I'm just trying to fill up my Pokedex, this really helps because you just catch them right away. It's like it's like a master ball. It has a really high chance of catching them. And if that fails, then go ahead and catch him like a normal legendary, paralyze him, lower his HP, and then throw a bunch of Pokeballs, Ultra Balls, Dusk Balls. Since he's in a cave, Dusk Balls work the best, but if you don't have Dusk Balls, then Ultra Balls is the best choice. So my Greninja over here has had Lick since the very beginning of the game when he first learned it as a Froakie, I believe. And I've always kept it because it's amazing for catching legendaries. And at that time, when I was up against Psychic types, even though I was a Dark type, well, I wasn't a Dark type until I evolved into Greninja, but I wasn't able to really take down Psychic and Ghost types easily. So go, I mean, Lick, even though it's a pretty weak move, it inflicted the paralyzing condition, and it, it was also super effective, so it actually did a lot of damage. So he's perfectly down to red, and the awesome thing is this guy doesn't have any moves like Roost or anything, so he's not going to be as annoying as Mewtwo, which was just rage-inducing. So even though he has a bunch of fire moves, Butcher Knife is probably my best bet, 
He probably also has Sunny Day up. I don't remember if he used it. But I think I have two more Pokeballs, or actually ten more Pokeballs left, so we're gonna use those ten Pokeballs. If you find catching legendaries is too easy with the Dusk and Ultra Ball, then it's obviously a good idea to try with Pokeballs, and it's also cool showing your friends that you caught in Pokeballs, and when you send it out, it's actually in a Pokeball and stuff. So I just assume that this guy's gonna be just as hard to catch as Zygarde, probably not Mewtwo, because one, I think Mewtwo has a lowest catch rate in the game, and two, because Mewtwo has those recovering moves, and Moltres obviously does not, or else he would've used it and we would've been in a lot of trouble. So, if Pokeballs don't work the entire way, oh yeah, so Pokeballs don't work, I mean, Pokeballs don't work the entire way, then we're gonna start using Dusk Balls, and we'll obviously catch them in Dusk Balls. The real challenge is catching them in Pokeballs. But after a while, throwing Pokeballs gets so annoying, you just, they just keep breaking out. It's like hunting for a shiny, and after every single encounter when Pokemon's appearing, it's not a shiny. I'm actually hunting for a shiny Larvitar myself, and every single time that egg hatches, because I'm hunting through breeding, but every single time that egg hatches, I have that slight bit of hope that it's gonna be a shiny, but no, it's not a shiny. And in case you're wondering, I am using the Masuda method because that'd be stupid if you're not using the Masuda method. And uh, Shofu actually released two videos on IV breeding and EV training, so I've been trying to get the best IVs for my Tyranitar. I mean, of course you can get all six IVs on your Pokemon, but ain't nobody got time for that. I'm I'm struggling to get three. I have got attack and speed down. I'm trying to get one of these Larvidars with HP because I have five boxes full of Larvidars, and I'm looking for one that has the perfect speed, and then I'm going to breed them with the Destiny Knot and everything, but... For the shiny part, or also you can use the adamant, I mean you could use the everstone to keep his nature as adamant while breeding, but I've hatched over 190 larvidars and there's still no shiny because I do have something planned for the shiny larvidar which, is, which you'll see soon once I get it. So it's just like that catching a Pokemon, it's so boring, not, obviously not as boring as shiny hunting, but honestly at a point you're just literally throwing pokeballs. When I was catching this guy earlier on my Pokemon Y version, I was literally just tapping A and watching a video on YouTube. It was literally that boring. Come on. On that note, I actually wish they introduced a few new Pokeballs in X and Y. I mean, they could have made Kurt make a return or something because Kurt was actually it was actually cool sending in different Apricorns and stuff, but maybe they don't want to reintroduce Apricorns and I don't think you can make a Pokeball out of berries. Oh, I thought that would catch. But you don't even have to bring back Kurt. You should have just like had different Pokeballs available in the store. The guy who sells the quick ball and the repeat ball, that person could have actually had a few more Pokeballs. Are you finally gonna go in? Thank you! Gosh, that was actually pretty good timing. I've talked about a few things there, but but wow, oh, wait, I just caught Moltres. I, I'm not even paying attention to that. But once I get the shiny Larvidar, it's gonna be a wrap. There's gonna be a lot of new things I'm gonna be doing. So Moltres, it is said to be the legendary bird Pokemon of fire. Every flap of its wings created dazzling fire of flames. So in that Pokedex thing, he kind of did look like a turkey. Some kind of chicken, so I'm going to name him Twerky. Take it however you want. But anyways, if you enjoyed that video, be sure to leave a like. If this actually helped, because I'm, I'm hoping this will help a few people, then be sure to share it with your friends or subscribe or something. And also be sure to follow me on Twitter, links in the description, and I will see you guys next time.